It's a real kick for me to introduce this lady to you because I've known her for many years. We used to make the rounds together in New York when neither one of us had a job. We'd have coffee together and cheer each other up and it's, uh, well, it's a thrill because she's one of the nicest ladies in show business and one of the funniest. My dear friend, Miss Phyllis Diller. <laughs> It's all made of tails. <laughs> the animals got away. <laughs> the only thing worse than not having anything to wear is to have nothing to put it on. <laughs> I showed this to Fang and I said, you never tell me how I look. He said, why start an argument? <laughs> I said, Fang, you know nothing about fashion. Have you seen the latest thing in men's clothing? He said, yeah, women. <laughs> Would you believe I'm turning gray? Not my hair, my skin. <laughs> there used to be a television show named after my skin, Rawhide. <laughs> I asked my neighbor if she could take me to a good beautician. She said, did you say beautician or magician? <laughs> so she took me to her salon and I asked the operator what was the first thing that we ought to do. And he said, uh, notify next of kin. <laughs> But he did say that I have inner beauty. Well, actually, what he said was, I admire your guts. <laughs> <laughs> Most women have a vanity table. With me, it's a humility count. <laughs> the only woman in the world who makes me feel a little better about the way I look is Fang's sister, Captain Bly. <laughs> If, if it weren't for her Adam's apple, she would have no figure at all. <laughs> she traveled in India and she laid down on a bed of nails, fell through. <laughs> and I traveled downtown yesterday got, and got into a terrible mess. A cop asked me to pull over to the curb. How did I know which one he meant? There are two. <laughs> I was lucky though, there were only 12 cars involved. <laughs> And only the day before, I backed over the mailbox, drove through two hedges, ran through the kitchen, and then I lost control of the car. <laughs> My last car wash cost me $100. I hit a fire hydrant. <laughs> but of course, I'm taking driving lessons. One day, I carried a stop sign for 10 blocks. And the teacher said, well, why didn't you stop? I said, the sign was moving. <laughs> I said, I didn't know you had to stop for a moving sign. In fact, I told him it was going faster than I was. He says, how do you know? It was in front of me, wasn't it? <laughs> Those driving instructors make me so nervous, I spend more on deodorant than I do on gas. <laughs> And then just the other day, Fang accused me of being immature just because he saw me rolling a hoop down the sidewalk. I just didn't have the heart to tell him that's all that's left of the car. <laughs> Do you know that there isn't a doctor in the world who will make a house call at night? The other night, my doctor told me to take two mornings and call him in the aspirin. <laughs> <laughs> My idea of diplomacy is a hostess who can convince a dinner guest that caraway seeds have legs. <laughs> of course, whiskey has always been Fang's favorite all-purpose medicine. He cried for three days when they discovered penicillin. <laughs> in fact, he once crossed a mule with a cow to try to get a milk with a kick in it. <laughs> Fang's big question about life is, can a man over 50 find happiness with a 12-year-old bottle of scotch? <laughs> ah, his breath is so bad, I wish there was some way to stop it. <laughs> and he's so insecure, he had pockets made in his skin so he'd have some place to put his hands when he's undressed. <laughs> In desperation, I asked my psychiatrist how I could get rid of Fang's split personality. He said, get two divorces. <laughs> Fang tried to leave me once. He didn't get too far. He was arrested for leaving the scene of an accident. <laughs> but I 
knew very early that our marriage was in a lot of trouble. I knew it on our first wedding anniversary. He gave me luggage. <laughs> it was packed. <laughs> My mother darn near suffocated. 